Kia ora, year 12 and 13. This video is going to look at a problem from the 2005 Scholarship Calculus paper. Right, so here's the question. Um, we've got a circle that's um, got the following equation. So this is x squared plus y squared is r squared. And then we've got an ellipse equation here. We have to figure out the area between the ellipse and the circle. So this question is not too bad it's just got an awful lot of steps in it and to expect you to do that in the time given in the exam was a pretty big ask so if you're feeling down when you watch this i want you to go and google 2005 scholarship calculus exam and what you'll find is that out of the 900 and something students who sat that year about 470 got between zero and five percent in the paper in other words the paper was pretty hard so I'm going to use this to do a really slow video because this question has got lots of great content in it. Okay, but don't freak out if you can't get the whole way through on your own first go. So the first thing we're going to look at is the equation of this ellipse and then the equation of the circle and where they intersect. So we've got x squared plus 16 times y minus r squared is equal to r squared. We know that our general ellipse form is this. So this is for an ellipse that's centred at the origin and you can see already that ours is not. Ours is centred up at 0R. So that's a vertical translation. Um, we're going to divide through by R squared and that gives me X squared on R squared this is equal to 1 so we have X squared on R squared plus y minus r squared on r squared over 16 is equal to 1. Now you don't need to do any of this for this question, this is just a lead in, but hopefully writing it in that form helps you see why the ellipse is drawn like this, because the centre is at 0r and the major axis has got a length of r on each side, and we see that from here, and the minor axis has got a little axis, sorry, a little length here of r on 4. So we're going to draw our own graph on the next slide. It's hopefully going to look a bit like this. And then we'll start to think about how we can find the area in between the two curves. So I did warn you this was going to be slow. Feel free to forward. All right, so now let's draw. Well, we've got x squared plus y squared is r squared. And x squared over r squared plus y minus r squared over r squared on 16 is equal to 1. So when we draw those two, this is what we've got. Here's my circle, and the circle has got um, values up here of r and negative r. And the ellipse is centered here, but that point's not on my ellipse, so I'm going to draw the minor axis like that, but we know from the form of the ellipse that the major axis is the same as it was for the circle. Right, so that's how come we get an ellipse that looks like that. So what we're trying to do is to find all of that shaded area, but we're going to do that by working with just this half and then doubling it. So the next step we've got to do is to find this point here, and I'm going to give that a name, I'm going to call that A. So how are we going to do that? Well, we've got two equations. We're going to solve them simultaneously. So the next task is to say, well, x squared plus y squared is equal to x squared plus oops, 16 times y minus r squared. So I'm going right back to the start of the problem with the equations that I was given in the paper. We can subtract x squared from both sides. We have y squared is equal to 16 times y minus r squared. Right, there are two ways to proceed here. The first way is to expand the side and work with the quadratic formula. So try that now, try the first few steps now. You should get this. That gives me
Right, so we can take that and we can substitute those values, those coefficients, into the quadratic formula. Now that's a bit of a nightmare. Um, I'm not going to do that. You could do that way and you would get there. So it's fine, but it's a bit yuck. The smarter thing to do here is to spot that we've got a difference of two squares. Just get rid of that. So the difference of two squares is this. y squared minus 16 times y minus r squared is equal to zero. I can factorize that as follows. So that's quite nice because it gives me 5y minus 4r is equal to 0. Or, hmm, what's going on here? Negative uh, 3y plus 4r is equal to 0. That gives me this one here. Gives me 5y equals 4r, or y is equal to 4r on 5. Over here, we get 3y is equal to 4. We've lost an r. There we are. So y is equal to 4r on 3. Now, we've got to choose which of those ones is right. So we've got y is 4 fifths of r, and we've got y is 4r on 3. We need to look here, up here at point A, and see if we can figure out which of those values is the right one. So we've got a circle here. And we want this point A. We know that um, the maximum height of the circle is R. So we must have Y is less than R. And that means that Y is not equal to 4 thirds of R. So we're going to reject that value. And we're going to use Y equals 4R on 5. Now, one of the drawbacks of video is that that was done really messily. If you're in my class, you can have a look at my work solutions to see how I've set that out. But you need to be justifying our rejection of this value and our choice of this one. Okay, so that's good. We've got our y value. Now we're going to take the y value and we're going to substitute it back into the circle equation up here. We're going to get our x coordinate. That will give me my limits of integration. Right, so we've got uh, x squared plus y squared is r squared. x squared plus 4 fifths r squared is r squared. x squared equals 25 r squared minus 16 r squared on 25, which is 9r squared. I'll stop talking for a bit. Right, there's that. Now we've got x is equal to plus or minus 3r on 5. And again, we turn to the graph to help us. Here's my circle. Whoops, there's my very badly drawn ellipse. We want this point here. And so we know that we're working, we're going to work with the positive value of x. I suppose we could work with this one, but that's guaranteed to go wrong somewhere. So finally, we've got the coordinates of point A, because we're going to have x be positive. So point A is 3r on 5, and y is 4r on 5. Finally, we're about ready to start working out the integral. All right, so point A is giving me my limits of integration. You need this x coordinate, which is 3r on 5, and this x coordinate is 0. Now, the next thing is to think about what's the integral. Well, we want to have the circle equation minus the ellipse equation, and we're going to integrate that with respect to x. So the circle equation, we want to have the top bit of the circle, and for the ellipse equation, we want to have this bit here. So we need to take each of those equations and make y the subject of the formula, because this expression's got to be in terms of x. So here, y can be 
for the circle, the positive or the negative root. But we want to have the top branch of the circle, so we're going to choose y equals just the positive one. So we'll write it like that, and that's because we want y to be greater than 0. Now we're going to do the same thing for the ellipse. Um, I'll do that over here. Sorry about the background noise. Right, so what do we have? Well, we've got y minus r squared is equal to this. Now, this time, we're going to have y minus r is equal to the positive or negative square root of this. But this time, we want to have the lower section of the ellipse, so this one here. So instead of choosing the plus, which is what we usually end up doing, we're going to choose the lower half. And that's going to give me an equation for the ellipse, which is y equals r minus 1 quarter, taking out the 16, times r squared minus x squared to the power of 1 half. Okay, and remember for the circle we're going to use this one. Now, I think this video is probably at the limit for uploading to YouTube as it is. So I'm going to call this part one, and I'll upload this now, and we'll come back and finish the problem off in a second video.